Do you think that a healthy environment is a human right? If so, what do you and your party intend to do about the continuing rise in cancers, neurological disorders and diseases such as autism, Tourette's syndrome, Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and diabetes type 1, both in terms of prevention and treatment of these disorders and diseases and in terms of service provision such as education and social services? All of these disorders and diseases have been linked to environmental toxins in the environment. And Fiona, since you've spent a lot of time with this, understandably, have you got what you think they could do? Would you want to keep your powder dry till you hear? Uh, I don't want to give them any clues because uh, I want to hear what they have to say. Sarah, so, go for it because uh, you've been a little under Okay, I think if you take a, an approach of environmental justice, then you do begin to think about where are uh, the ill health problems in Scotland. And I think that's one of the things we should be focusing on for the next Scottish Parliament. For example, an obvious thing is that we still routinely throw out far too much rubbish rather than recycling. And I think we need to take a much more holistic approach thinking through Ross is right, air quality. There's also water quality. But I would also focus on things like reducing our rubbish. We've got an aspiration of going to 70% recycling. That's linked in with composting and recycling. We've got to actually link these agendas together. Sarah, with all due respect, this is, I mean, this is a toughie because it is cancer we're talking about. But I mean, the World Health Organization is estimating there will be 75 million people living with cancer in 2030. Now, does anybody have something very specific? I'm not, it's a difficult thing for you to be expert in, so please, Mark. Okay, two things I want to say. Uh, the woman talked about toxic pollution. Um, Sarah mentioned environmental justice. Just to be clear what that means, it's the poorest community in Scotland, poorest communities in Scotland that end up with the landfill sites. Communities like Green Gares in North Lanarkshire who end up with the pollution coming from landfill, coming from rubbish dumps. Across central Scotland, it's the poorest communities who are hit by the blight of things like open cast mine, mining, causing some of the kind of diseases that were mentioned. Um, so I find it very strange that Sarah mentions environmental justice when one of the key environmental justice measures, giving communities the same rights as developers to object to things like open cast mines, to object to things like rubbish dumps, giving them a right of appeal was missed by the executive. The second thing that really worries me as a Lothian MSP is the fairly reliable information I've had about some of the new developments in places like Grant and Waterfront. Land that's pretty obviously contaminated. It's been used for industrial purposes. The local authority doesn't designate it as contaminated. Therefore, SEPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, has no locus to deal with the land because the local authority says it's not contaminated. So up go the new blocks of flats. Now, that's the kind of thing that's happening in a mad rush for profits. And environmental considerations, environmental protection is being ignored. And that is going to give us a legacy, as the lady at the back des described, right. of illnesses. So actually proper dealing with contaminated land and a third party right of appeal so communities don't get blighted with landfills, I think will be two steps okay. forward. Um, I'm afraid I'm going to have to pull rank on you, Mark. Um, back in the late 80s, early 90s, so we're talking quite some time ago. I did the re research on this book here, Waste Not, Want Not, which was about, I did all the Scottish research for it, which was about the fight of various communities against toxic waste uh, incinerators and dumps. It addressed the problem throughout the UK, but I addressed the problems in Scotland. You are so out of touch, all of you, with the issues at hand. 20, 30 years ago, we knew that dioxins not only cause cancer, they also acted as an immune system depressant. We are now finding out that there are various other chemicals and there are thousands of chemicals which are introduced year upon year into the environment with the most minimal testing. It's not about toxic waste dumps next door. That's the inevitable consequence of society, a hydrocarbon society that looks solely at economic growth and see, sees no way to get beyond the technologies that they've known of for 100 years. Sees no way to develop land, 
to develop goods in terms of their minimal impact on the environment. You're just looking at money the whole time. What you should be looking at is why we have, for instance, and you've not, not even mentioned services here, because what's going to happen, just to sound a wee bit like Neil Kinnock here, and I don't really mean to do that, he warned people that you should not be old or disabled or poor. I'm warning you, you shouldn't be old, disabled, you shouldn't have a disabled child or be poor. Because in future, you're not going to be able to afford the health care because that is going to have to be clamped back on. We have so many outgoings. Fiona, can I ask you then for what the solution is? I mean, you said you had one. We're just, we're just basically going to have to ban whole classes of chemicals or the outgoings. I see Alex Johnston laughing. It's not a funny matter. It's three million pounds per lifetime per autistic person. You're talking of millions on health care. You don't look at how you can actually stem the tide of expenditure on health care, on social systems, and you don't want to do anything about it because actually the end result is all the costs, health, social, everything else, is downloaded onto the individual families who have the cancers to deal with, who have the disabilities to deal with, learning disabilities, autism, Alzheimer's, you name it. Right, Alec, do you want to have one response and then we're going to move on to a question? I think it's very important to remember that the government in Scotland, uh, whatever party is in control of it in future, will remain to fulfil, uh, continue to fulfil its commitments. The one issue that I wanted to take up that the lady mentioned earlier was the issue of autism. Uh, and while my experience of some of the things that she's raised is very limited, uh, I have, uh, I think along with Richard, uh, dealt with a, a situation in the northeast of Scotland where the provision of care for those with autism uh, was interfered with for what we believe to be ideological reasons in some cases, where a decision was made to uh, undermine uh, some very good uh, special schools that were dealing with the issue of autism uh, and force a policy okay. of mainstreaming. Uh, I think it's very important that we do take into... Alec right, Fiona, Fiona, we've got it. You're not really tackling the, the origins of the problem, which is what Fiona's trying to emphasize. So that's okay, but I just want to let you have a chance to come back at it.